Regression. The word is enough to strike fear in the heart of many people. Some people look at regression and they think of something like losing a skill set. For instance, when my little boy was just a year old and learning to walk, he magically regressed on that particular skill every single time I was in the room, which meant that he could magically walk when it was his daddy and his grandparents walking him, but as soon as mommy walked into the room, oh, look, he couldn't walk anymore. Mommy had to carry him. This went on for about four to six weeks. So one definition of regression is losing a skill or something that you had before, going back. Well, the other definition of regression is that it's a really powerful statistical tool. The problem is that can also strike fear into the hearts of many college students. If you are in that category, fear not. I'm going to help take the fear factor out of regression. It's a pretty simple analysis. It's super powerful and it's super useful to you in your business career. So what I find the best thing to do before we dive into the regression equation is to define the variables in the regression equation. And so the first thing you have is X and Y variables. And the first thing you've got to remember is which one is independent and which one is dependent. And the best way to remember that is X predicts Y. Your independent variable is what you're using to predict your dependent variable. So X is your independent variable. Y is your dependent variable. So X predicts Y. Two or three other terms that are important is beta, or for the first is beta. And the beta is simply the slope of the line in a regression equation. A is where the line crosses the y-axis, and r squared is the amount of variance explained by the model. If this still sounds like Greek to you, let's look at a basic regression model and see if we can help clear some of this up. So this regression model is using the square footage of houses to see if they can see if it predicts the selling price of that particular house. So notice we have our points plotted on a scatter graph and we have a line going through that um, best connects them. This line is our regression line, okay? We also have a regression equation up here. Excel has told us that Y, which remember Y is your dependent variable, which in this case is the selling price of the house, okay? Price of the house is along the Y axis. So y equals 99.64x plus 4,853. So let's break each of these down. So what this is telling us is that the selling price of the house, y, equals 99.64 times x, which is the number of square feet in the house, plus 48,053. This 48,053 is the y-intercept. That is where this line would cross the y-axis. And if you kind of draw this out, you can kind of get that approximation. It would cross the y-axis about right here, okay? And so what that would tell us is that we could plug in a number for square footage of a house say we can make this simple, we can plug in a thousand square feet, and then we know that the selling price of the house would be 99.64 times 1,000 plus 4,853. I'll give you a minute if you want to write that down and solve it or plug it into a calculator. All right, so you should have gotten a solution that was 147,693 dollars. So that we would predict the selling price of a 1,000 square foot house at 147,693 dollars. Now the next question we start to ask ourselves is how accurate is this regression model? And this R squared is a really useful piece of information about our, our model. In this case, in this given sample, this R squared tells us that 
the square footage of the house predicts 92% of the change in the selling price. See this 0.92? So that would be 92%, 92.33% if we want to get really technical. So 92% of the selling price of these houses in this model are predicted by the regression equation. This generally means that you have a pretty powerful regression equation. So great, let's just slap this thing into any, or let's just slap the selling price of any house into this equation and it'll work, right? Maybe not. This is only one factor in the regression equation. In fact, there, if you look at the samples that I, I were used, it's not even a huge number of samples. So maybe these samples are good for, let's say, Lakeland, Florida. They might produce reasonable selling prices for houses. But do you really think that a 2,000 square foot house in Lakeland, Florida is going to sell for the same amount as a 2,000 square foot house in the middle of New York City? I don't think so. So you have to know things about your data, like where it was collected. What's the range of the data? Look, this data ranges from a bottom of 2,000 square feet to a top value of 3,600 square feet. If we had a 500 square foot condo, do you think it would still accurately predict it? It might, but we don't have any real data to support that one way or the other. Again, what about a 10,000 square foot mansion? It might be accurate in predicting it. Then again, it might not. That is a term called generalization. And with regression, it is important that you don't just assume that your the results from your data sample will generalize to other groups. So it's re the, the more different the groups are from your sample, the less likely your data is to generalize. In fact, that's one of the reasons that a single study doesn't really prove anything ever. In fact, if somebody says a new study proved, you can kind of stop listening right there because they don't know what they're talking about. A single study literally proves nothing. It can indicate that something might be true or it can indicate that something might be not be true, but it literally does not prove anything other than that for that one sample, those are the results they got. You can't generalize that to any other population. And so a lot of times if you look at the health um, trends that are coming out and you, you, those magazines, I, I tend to be really guilty of saying, uh, this new study proves everything we knew about about, you know, fat was wrong or something along that line. N no, that, that's really not how it works. It pre they might present a new interesting piece of information, but they don't prove that the rest of the studies are automatically wrong by their new results. There might be something different in the population that they are looking at. They might not have had good procedures in their study. You don't ever base ma major decisions off of one single study. So again, just a little help tip from Dr. Stuckey. Don't any anytime somebody says the new study proves something, they don't know what they're talking about, and you don't have to listen to them. All right, so let's go back and let's talk about this little thing in regression called outliers. Now we don't have any major outliers on this data set. But you do have a couple points that are maybe more off the line than others. These can be sometimes as interesting to go back and look at as the points that are actually on the regression line. Because the underlying question is, what's different about these points that makes them not fit the rest of the data set? Um, so in the case that you have a data set where there's a bunch of outliers, you've probably like missed something. Um, there's probably another factor that you need to explain the, the data better. For instance, in our house example, what if we had combined housing from Lakeland, Florida and New York into the same model? It would look like our square footage didn't do much predicting because you would have outliers all over the place. Okay, it would look like your model was terrible. So, because you would have Lakeland like way down here and New York probably way up here where we don't even have numbers on this particular graph. So what you would get is a line probably somewhere in here that didn't fit any of the data. In that case, you have um, another variable that would better or that would help better explain the data. In that case, you would need to go to multiple regression where you were looking at more than one independent variable. And um, those two independent variables together would likely explain a lot more of the data than just one of the independent variables. 
All right, so let's look at our regression equation. So our simple linear regression equation is y, which remember y is the dependent variable, equals a plus b times x. So y is our dependent variable, okay? a is where the line crosses your, the y-axis, the beta is the slope of the line, and x is the, that, that's your dependent variable, that's the, I'm sorry, your independent variable, that's the number you're going to plug in. So in this case, that was the square footage of the house, and y was the selling price of the house. So say we'd had a, um, say we had been, um, say we'd actually put in two factors, okay? So you would still have, start with y equals, you would still have your intercept, but you would have more than one beta um, times x. You would actually have a different beta for each of the x's, and we'll go over that more in another video. All right, so Excel will do regression for you in more than one way. It did, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a simple way to do regression where you just do a scatter plot and you have it put in um, the trend line and you can view the regression. That's what we looked at earlier. This is actually a summary output from Excel that, um, that you can you can get this through the data tab and um, the data analytics and you can run an actual regression on it. And you, let's talk about some of this data and how it responds. First of all, you see the R square is still that 92.33%. So it still means that 92% of the variance is explained. It's exactly the same thing we got before. Your intercept, still the same intercept, 48,053. That would have been rounded. Your, um, the coefficient, the beta for the square footage is that still that 99.63. Now, it does also give, this does give you more information. For instance, it gives you the overall significance of the model. So the significance F, this is like important. Um, if this is 0.05 or below, it means that there's a 95% chance that, or a 95% chance or above that this regression equation actually is significant in predicting the dependent variable. So that you want this to be 0.05, I'm sorry, 0.05 or less. It needs to be 0.05 or less. And if it is, then it means that you generally have a decent model. You also want to look at the p-value over here for each of the statistics. So you want the same as, uh, the p-value is the same as this, F, you want it to be 0.05 or less. If it's more than that, it probably means that that particular variable is not a good predictor of the um, dependent variable. So that independent variable is not a good predictor of the dependent variable. So let's look at this, this intercept. It actually, even though our model is significant and the square footage definitely um, is predicting, the intercept actually isn't significant. And you can see the lower 95% to upper 95%. In other words, in order to get it in the 95% confidence interval, it could range from negative 44,000 and change to 140,000 and change for the intercept. That might explain some of the oddities we saw and why the independent variables didn't um, line up. That might account for something like the plot size of the land. Um, obviously, something with more acreage might be more valuable than something with less acreage, or it might account for area of town. We just don't know. There's not enough information. The other thing you need to look at is the standard error. When the standard error is really high compared to the coefficient, then this might not be a good variable to trust. And again, you look at the intercept the standard error is almost as big as the coefficient. That means the intercept isn't necessarily trustworthy. The standard error for the square footage is fairly well done. All right, so I hope that this video has taken out some of the fear of regression. It's not hard to get the results, and it really isn't even all that hard to interpret the results. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I am always available to help you all. Thanks, and have a great day.